Hi everyone, and in today's video, we're going to check out the final area of episode 1 for the PSO Law playthrough and find out the, the fate of Rico. Hi guys, and welcome back to another video for Fantasy Star Online. So, in today's video, we're going to continue the episode 1 law playthrough and we're going to go to the final part of episode 1, which is the ruins. So in the last episode, we went through the mines and we discovered that all of the machines there had gone berserk and that something was going on behind the scenes, something that Pioneer One was doing on the secret um, that maybe everyone wasn't aware of. Now, after we defeated Volopt, there would have been a, a sealed door we had to unlock to unlock this final area. So once we finally get through that sealed door, this is the area we come to, which is the ruins. Now, when you initially spawn into ruins, the first thing you'll notice is that it looks very, very artificial. Um, it almost does look a little bit alien. It doesn't really look like anything you've seen previously in PSO. None of the other areas have anything like this architecture. It is completely different to everything you've seen. And as we venture in, we'll start to run into these enemies. Now, all the enemies in ruins are dark and they're, they are what are called D-cell life forms. They are only in this part of the game in episode 1. And at this point we don't really know what they are. I mean it's clear that these guys, the Dimensions, are obviously very very similar to things like Boomers, Evil Sharks and so on. But whether they are another mutation or not, we're not really sure at this stage. We just know that it, it's some other kind of mutation or potentially some new life form altogether. But as things stand we don't really know anything about them. And again, you can see that a lot of the enemies here are just completely alien to everything we've seen so far. And this does make you wonder why this area was sealed off in the first place. It's obviously a dangerous area, it is full of enemies. But at this point, we don't really know why it was sealed off. So as we venture a little bit into Ruins 1, we get the first message from Rico. So it's clear that Rico has been through the Ruins as well. And this is where we start to get a totally different side of Rico starting to come through. Why am I here with monsters lurking everywhere? Did the army even stand a chance against them? Now to me, this first of all lets you know that the, the army, assuming the army from Pioneer 1 has previously been through here, you can see that there is a lot of um, what appears to be different wreckage. Now this, if you look at it, it does look kind of similar to some of the wreckage near the central dome. So this could be remnants of Pioneer 1 wreckage that has been destroyed when people have, have came to the ruins but the other reason i wanted to point out this message is because this to me gives you a side of rico that she's starting to get a bit scared previously in all the messages she's been very investigative and is wanting to you know, question everything why things are happening or looking at things from an objective point of view as a hunter whereas now there is a, like a slight hint in this message of rico is actually starting to get a bit scared and maybe that she's gone in a bit over her head now, along with the waterfall room in caves, this is probably one of the most famous rooms in the entire PSO. This features in every single run through ruins and is a centerpiece room that the game wants you to stop and take notice of when you're coming through it. So we've got this huge waterfall um, and a huge void down below. And there's another message from Rico here as well. What is this big hole? It looks like remnants of some type of energy explosion. Energy? Was the central dome destroyed by this? So this is starting to get a bit creepy now, so we now have this huge explosion crater. We know that the central dome was, was now destroyed by an explosion. So now we've potentially got a source for where this explosion came from. So did this explosion that destroyed the central dome, did it originate from the ruins? And as we continue through ruins, this, this will become a little bit more clear as to what is actually going on. So when we get to certain rooms in Ruins 1, you can get a little view outside. So it, it's kind of hard to see here, but uh, there is actually a big complex here. And this kind of indicates how large and vast the ruins actually is. And as we get to this room here, um, Rico comments on the same kind of thing as well. I can see a distant view through this window. 
The ruins are huge. I never would have imagined such a great civilization. So it is looking like there was some kind of civilization potentially on Ragol beforehand. Um, and this appears to be some kind of huge base or city for them. It, it's kind of, again, hand hard to tell at this point. It's clearly been constructed by someone. We don't really have any idea of who that is. Just that it, it appears to be some kind of ancient civilization, which could match up with those pillars that we used to unlock this area. So it's kind of all fallen into place now. So when we get to this monument here, um, this little glass monument, Rico has another message which is really interesting. Those strange characters were found here and there. By that she's meaning the characters that were on the monuments in the previous areas. I think I have enough samples to decipher the meaning of the message on the monument. Light makes darkness. A pair exists, but it doesn't always exist. Reincarnation goes forever. The rule is here. It should be sealed. Moot dit pum. Does it make sense? I wish I had enough time to study these unknown characters. Now, the moot dit pum part at the end, that is kind of up to interpretation in PSO. The most common theory that I've seen for it, for what it may mean, is that it could be a veiled reference to the original Fantasy Star games. So it could be a reference to Moot, could be a reference to Motavia. Dit could be a reference to Dizolis, and Pum could be a reference to Palma, which are all planets from the original Fantasy Star games. Um, at the end of the day, this is still a Fantasy Star game, so it's likely that this is a reference to those original games, which would make sense given what happens later. So again, we, don't, we still don't really know a whole lot. We know that this message is essentially saying that there's some kind of balance between light and darkness and that whatever is here should be sealed, which now should be worrying anyone who's come through ruins because we know that we have disabled three of these pillars which had sealed this place. So we have unsealed something, which is probably not a good thing if you've played any Fantasy Star games. Now, one thing you may notice when you run through ruins is there is a strange mix of technological, but there is also some elements that almost look biological. So these cylinders here, for example, kind of look like they're breathing. So it does beg the question of like, is this place alive? Were experiments being done here or is the whole place alive? Or is it just some weird mix of technology and, you know, biology? At this stage, again, we don't really know anything about this ancient civilization and what may or may not be here. So here in this area with a lot of wreckage, and uh, there's another message from Rico. Wreckage. These weapons are from Pioneer 1. They must have already entered the ruins, and from the look of things, fighting went on. It must have been a big battle. Seems our army was hurt badly. So this kind of confirms what she hinted at earlier. So it looks like Pioneer 1 entered this place. I assume after they finished excavating through the mines, they, I'm guessing they maybe stumbled across this place, went in to explore it and got attacked by all the D-cell creatures. And it looks like Pioneer 1 came off very badly from the resulting battle. So when we get to Ruins 2, you can see that the, the atmosphere hasn't changed too much. We, we have a different color palette, um, which I think is just to give the, the area a bit of identity. But you can see that there is still a lot of mechanical and artificial elements to the area. So you can see that um, there's elements in the roof and below me as well that are rotating. There's a lot of, I don't want to say man-made because it still looks really, really alien. But you can tell that this was created by something or someone. Like this is not a natural occurrence. The other quick thing I want to say about ruins as well is that I feel like, particularly in this area, the music does a fantastic job of conveying the atmosphere. You know, there is this really sort of horrifying, kind of unnerving undertone to the music, as if it, it's almost like the music is trying to tell you you shouldn't be here. And I, I love that about the music. The combat music and the sort of idle music in ruins is fantastic and really does help set the atmosphere. Now, when we get to this message in Ruins 2, this kind of throws everything that we've ever known kind of out the water. And this is a huge revelation to you when you first get to it. So it's another message from Rico. I haven't studied all the characters yet, but I've got some useful information. This is the most important fact that I found. There was no ancient civilization on Ragol. 
Now just let that sink in. So all of these pillars in the areas, all of this artificial area, we were convinced that this was because of an ancient civilization, but Rico is now saying that she's got some kind of evidence to prove that it wasn't. We didn't discover ruins. This is a spaceship, a gigantic spaceship. So this completely throws everything out of the water for everything that we've known so far. So we now know that this is some kind of spaceship. Now, why it's underground and buried, we don't know. But we know that the previous monuments have said that something should be sealed. And it's kind of starting to fall together now. So we've now got this huge spaceship, which is underground for some reason. We know that something is sealed and shouldn't be unsealed, which could explain why this place is underground to begin with. You know, has some has someone buried this place underground to stop something from happening? And bear in mind, we've just had a huge explosion that has really damaged the central dome. Maybe whatever was being kept here is now free. Bearing in mind that we have unlocked several sealed gates. Uh, Rico has been here before us. The army has been here as well. Maybe that has disturbed something. And it's now starting to all fall together. You know, have we tampered with something that we really shouldn't have done? And by we, I mean us, Rico, and Pioneer One in general. And now we've got another message from Rico. And again, it's in front of one of these little monuments. I'm now inside the ancient spaceship. Well... It's not just a spaceship. So first of all, we thought this was an ancient civilization's ruins. Now we know it's a spaceship, but now there's even more to that. It's a casket. Something or somebody was sealed in this spaceship to remain buried here. What is it? Why was something buried in such a manner? Anyway, I know that a monster is sleeping in this cave. We've opened the forbidden door. So I think Rico is now aware of that we have done something horribly wrong that we really shouldn't have messed with. And she's now, again, there is this like element of kind of panic and unease with Rico now. And you'll see that as we go through ruins, that kind of does progress. Um, she's now very concerned that we have tampered with something that we really shouldn't have, something that's far beyond our comprehension. So in this room in room 2, again, this is one of the, like, the centerpiece rooms. You can see it's a very, very large room. And you can see now that there is a, a ton of things going on. So we have a lot of, again, mechanical structures in the background. Again, with some parts that kind of look a bit organic. And a lot of moving pieces as well. And as this quick message from Rico says, still moving. The ship's still operating. So even though this is an ancient ship, um, it's still actually functional. Which just explain why everything's still moving. So we're now quite deep into Ruins 2 and we get this message from Rico, which I think really sort of accentuates how she's feeling at the moment. So I mentioned earlier that Rico is starting to show some signs of that she's scared and that she's gone into something she really shouldn't have got involved with. And this is just real evidence of this. I want to run away, but I have no place to return to. Perhaps no one will ever find this message and listen to it, ever. Pioneer 2 will not come down when they discover that this planet is dangerous. Will somebody from Pioneer 2 still come to save us? Who knows? Regardless, I leave this message here. This is evidence of my existence. So Rico is now basically just hoping that Pioneer 2 will come and save them. She's realised that Pioneer 1 has got far too in over their heads and that there's no hope of Pioneer 1 getting out of this themselves. It's obvious that they've lost a lot of the army when they investigate the ruins in the first place. And Rico is obviously now very, very scared. And she's, she's now essentially pinning all hopes for her and the rest of Pioneer 1's survival on Pioneer 2 coming down to help them. Now, we, we have come down to investigate what's going on. The question is, is it too late? Now, after a long time through Ruins 2, we finally reach the final area, which is Ruins 3. And once you get here, you can see that the area has taken kind of a, a, a shift in design. So we've moved more from Ruins 1, which was largely kind of synthetic with some elements of biological 
into Ruins 2, which was kind of a, a bit of a mix of both. Now, Ruins 3, you can see, is very much biological. We have what look like something like spider webs everywhere. The certain parts of the map kind of look like something at this part here. Kind of looks a little bit like bone. And um, you can see that under the floor here, it's actually moving like and pulsating like a heartbeat. Um, there's also all these what appear to be like parasites under the floor as well. So it, it's a really, really disgusting and unnerving area when you get here. So what you'll notice as you come through ruins is that a lot of recall messages are in front of these like crystal monuments. I'm guessing that what she's doing is as she's going through the ruin, she's reading and translating the characters that she now knows how to read. Dark Falls, that's the name. The God of Destruction that revives in the Millennial Cycle. Perhaps this entity encountered a civilization thousands of years ago. They could not defeat it, but managed to seal it in this gigantic spaceship. They abandoned it somewhere far from the planet. It was this place, Ragol. We've come to a terrible place at the worst possible time. So Rico now knows what's going on, so Dark Falls, if you don't know, is a recurring enemy in the Fantasy Star series and is pretty much notorious. It is essentially a being that will revive itself constantly every so often and is almost unbeatable. And what tends to happen in a lot of the Fantasy Stars is quite often it will be sealed away because people won't actually be able to kill it. They will just seal it away and it will stay sealed until it revives again. And it appears that this spaceship that we're on is essentially a huge floating prison or dark fault that has now been buried somewhere far away from the civilization that managed to seal it. And they chose Ragol as the place to seal it. So although we've discovered Ragol as a potential new settlement planet, what we don't know is that it's also the containment for dark falls. So as Rico said, we have chosen a terrible time to come to Ragol. Going through Ruins 3, what you'll notice is there are a lot more messages from Rico. She's obviously discovering more and more as she goes through. Dark Falls is a consciousness. This entity has no body. So very, very simple bit of information, but she's saying that Falls is essentially just this um, entity that exists, but doesn't actually have a corporeal form. Now, if you've played any Fantasy Star games, you probably know how Dark Falls gets its body. And at that point, I'll say, I'll say no more. Now, at this point, we start to get some different messages from Rico. So previously, it's all been very scientific. And we noticed at the start of Ruins that there was this element of a starting to show some signs of being scared. And now we get a message now, which is a very personal message from her. And it, it shows this completely different side of her. And you start to understand that Rico has almost resigned herself to a fate at this point. I miss my father. I wasn't a very good daughter, was I? Is my father okay now? Now again, if you know anything about Rico, you know that her father is Colin Tyrell, who is the principal on Pioneer 2. She's obviously now showing some concern for him because she knows that Pioneer 2 is en route to Ragol. And I'm guessing she's now worrying, first of all, that she doesn't want to let her father down but also she's worried for his safety as well. And I suppose everyone on board Pioneer too as well, because she knows that they're essentially walking into this death trap. Now, another message from Rico as we get quite far into Ruins 3 now. Don't let it come in. The dark consciousness looks for the best animal to obtain its temporal host body. Again, this is probably ringing alarm bells for people who play Fantasy Star previously because you probably know how Darth Vader gets its, uh, its host bodies. And things are not looking good at this point. Now this this corridor always appears in Ruins 3 and I, and a lot of people I used to play with, we used to call this the Corridor of Doom because you knew if you found this route that this was the route to the end of Ruins 3. And because the boss is kind of notorious, you, you know that um, you're, you're getting near the final boss fight now. So it is sort of a very thematic area, I suppose, because no other area in the game has this this long corridor. It kind of builds up the tension of what you're actually going to face. Because at this point, you, you kind of know that it's probably going to be Dark Falls, but you don't really know anything about Dark Falls. 
So maybe Rico can help us out a bit here. The door is already opened. We opened it. This may be the beginning of the end of the universe. We have to do something. We must do it. We have to defeat it now. Defeat it before that dark thing revives with the perfect body. So I think Rico has now realised how dangerous Dark Falls is and how much in danger Ragol is as a whole. And that includes Pioneer 1, Pioneer 2, which is on the way at that point. And all of the native life on Ragol as well. She's now really concerned that this could be like the beginning of the end of this entire planet or potentially the, even the entire universe. And she's now desperate and she knows that someone needs to try and defeat Dark Falls before it can revive with a, with a perfect body. So now after much venturing through the ruins, we finally get to the final boss part of episode one. And we know at this point now, based on Rico's messages, that we are probably going to be going up against Dark Falls. We have no idea if it's revived with any kind of body or anything. We have no idea how strong it's going to be. At this point, we are basically throwing ourselves into the unknown, which Rico was probably already doing as well when she was coming through ruins, because no one really had any idea of the, the sheer power of what they were going up against. So I've always loved this boss fight just because of how it's phrased. So when you walk into the boss portal originally, you come into this area here, and I'm just going to stop speaking for a minute just so you can hear the music. Now this music, when you get here, First of all, you're confronted with this almost idealistic image as soon as you walk in. We've got, you know, beautiful blue skies, there's flowers everywhere. It's an absolutely beautiful area. And considering we've just walked from one of the most horrific areas in the entire game, it's it's almost like a complete perversion of that. It's it's a really confusing shift. But as you wander around this area, you will start to realise some things. So for example, you will realise that these are quite likely based on how they look they look like memorials or gravestones you can also it might be able to hear in the music it's quite hard to hear but there's a weird sort of distortion in the music that happens every now and again and just because the music's so quiet as well it makes this area extremely eerie even though it looks very pretty and very beautiful and serene and i think a large part of that is because of this huge obelisk standing in the middle of it so if we just go to the free cam, you can see we've just got this massive obelisk just in the middle of nowhere and it just, it doesn't match with anything really. And it just looks a little bit ominous. And that combined with the like almost complete silence of the area, it, it honestly makes this one of the creepiest areas in the entire game despite how it looks. Now, when we approach the, the obelisk, we discover what this place actually is. And more importantly, we discover the fate of what happened to Pioneer 1. So as it changes, you can see the entire floor changes to these like writhing faces. You can see they're all over the floor, they're all over the walls in the background. Now, these little mind things are what are called Darvins, and this is just like the initial phase of the false fight. You will see, if I can get the positioning right, you can see that the obelisk sometimes does appear. It's, it's very hard to get it to show up, but now and again it will kind of phase back into existence. It's, it's very, very hard to see, but it is still there. Yeah, you might be able to see it there. But this area is essentially just complete nightmare fuel. Um, you can see there's just faces writhing all over the ground. And these faces, you'll be unsurprised to learn, are the entire crew of Pioneer 1. So there were no survivors whatsoever. And I've always just thought that this is a brilliant way of like, showing off the Dark Faults fight and like bigging up Dark Faults as this huge big boss. I think as you run through this as well, you just realise like how terrifying this must have been for Rico and for the rest of the crew of Pioneer 1 as well. 
it's clear at this point they're all they're all dead. Um, the actual fate of them is that they're all essentially been absorbed by Dark Falls. Now, what happens with this phase is as you defeat some of these Darvents, you will progress to the actual first phase of Dark Falls. So this completely unseals the monument, and we get to see Dark Falls in all its absolute grotesque glory. Now, as we look at Dark Falls, you can see we've got this like weird sort of monster, almost like a chariot at the bottom. But what you'll probably notice is if you look at the top half of it, it looks very humanoid. And it probably, at this point, doesn't take a genius to figure out who that is. And if I need to spell it out, you'll, you'll, you'll see at the end. So again, we don't really change areas, so we're still in this horrific area with all the faces writhing around on the floor. Interestingly, on the original Dreamcast version, there was also ghosts that appeared in this map as well that would sort of rise out the floor. But for some reason, they got rid of that in the later games. So as we defeat Faults, we go to its next phase. And this essentially is more or less the same thing, but without the chariot part at the bottom. But again, you can see this is very obvious humanoid at the top. Now... We may as well just reveal this now, and you, you will get confirmation of this soon as well, but this, you'll be unsurprised to learn, is Red Ring Rico. And there's one really easy way of telling that. If you look at the humanoid part of Faults, and you look at the left arm, you can see what looks like a red bangle on the arm. And that is your little visual indication that this is, that this is Red Ring Rico. So... We talked about Faults needing a, a vessel to get a corporeal form, and Rico unfortunately becomes that vessel, so Zuriko is very much dead, like the rest of Pioneer 1. Now, as we defeat this, this is in normal, so what I wanted to do is, there's actually two different final versions of Dark Falls, so if you fight in normal, this is your final phase. If you fight in hard or high, you get a different final phase, and I want to show both, because there's a difference with the ending of kill screen. So in normal, when you defeat Dark Falls... It's such a simple thing. But just the, the image of the Red Ring fall into the ground. It's, it's almost like drilling it home, like, yes, this was Red Ring Rico. But it doesn't explicitly say, yes, Rico is dead. But it's a very obvious hint, you know, the fact that it has Rico's bangle. So that's how it looks when you defeat Fault in normal. So what I'll do now is I will I'll quickly go back to the quest and I'll, I'll run through and I'll do it on hard. And I'll show you how it differs in hard and higher. So we're now doing Dark Falls on hard and you can see we're up to this, what was the final phase on the previous difficulty. Now, when you defeat this phase on hard or higher, you don't actually get the, the red ring drop, so instead it actually transitions to the next phase instead. So this is the actual final phase of Dark Falls. And when we defeat this phase, there's a little bit of a different end scene. So when you get this end scene, you can see that as Falls dies, we actually get to see Rico ascend. So I I'm guessing that's meant to be like Rico's soul leaving Falls. And that's your essentially a confirmation that, that Rico did die and that she was being held by Falls. Essentially, Falls was using her to create its own um, corporeal version. So yeah, it's an interesting story, episode one. It's it's quite interesting by the fact that it doesn't kind of end how you expect it necessarily. So I think with a lot of games, you kind of expect that there's going to be a happy ending where I don't feel that episode one really is that. It's it's good that obviously you have defeated Files and you've essentially repelled it until its next regeneration. But there is this underlying sadness as well that it came at the cost of all of Pioneer 1 dying and the loss of Red Ring Rico as well. 
Now, after this in the story, um, Colin Tyrell doesn't really take it very well, obviously, because he's essentially lost his daughter. Um, he kind of goes out of the public light for a while. He kind of gets disgraced, honestly. But that's kind of where the episode one ends. So in the next episode, what we'll do is we'll look at episode two. Now, episode two is really interesting because it kind of starts at about the same time as episode one chronologically, but it fills in a lot of the gaps that episode one left and also introduces a lot of new elements as well. So it's a really, really interesting story. So if you enjoyed this kind of video, um, please consider liking, subscribing or joining as a member. I do normally two videos a week and one stream on a weekend and we mainly play fantasy star games. I'm an NGS official creator for PSO2 New Genesis, but I do a lot of the old fantasy styles as well. Um, you can also join us on Discord and you can also follow me on Twitter as well at Section Skylight. So feel free to follow me on there or join us on the Discord. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed this look at the episode one lore and we will continue this with episode two and episode four as well. Episode three, we may cover at a future date, but I need to put a lot more work into that to actually get through the story. But we'll at least cover episode one, two and four, just to give you the main background of the PSO lore. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed this slightly different series of videos and yeah, hope we see you guys in the next ones.